Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. And I gotta be completely honest up front, I tried how to, like, I tried to figure out how to make this video interesting for a long time. And honestly, I don't really know. So this is just gonna be a I ramble about a graphics card video. So if you like this kind of video, then I guess that's fine. But honestly, this is not gonna be the best video I've ever made. I just really wanted to make a video about this thing, but I don't really know, like, what to specifically say is cool about it. Um, it it's just a thing I want to make a video about, but there's not really anything special. Um, because we've seen this before. This right here is a GTX 1070. This is not the 1070 you've seen before. It is just a completely identical one that I now also have. Here's the proof. <laughs> so this is my first 1070. That's the second one. They are both completely identical, except for the part where this one says Galax on the fans of its heatsink, and the new one doesn't say anything. It's unbranded. It doesn't say Galax or KFA2 anywhere on the card. And as far as I know, that's because this card came out of a pre-built, uh, which uh, yeah is a pretty typical thing. I think it was Dell who also gets their graphics cards from MSI. Like that, they have a couple cards where like they just have an MSI shroud, but like also without the MSI logo on it. So this is not unheard of that you just get like a card that's an off-the-shelf product and they just remove the branding and stick it into a pre-build. Um, so that's why I think this this doesn't have any stickers on it because they, they were not removed. Like the card actually, I think this card had a pretty easy life. It had minimal amounts of dust on it and it very clearly still had the factory paste, so it's not like this thing was cleaned. So I think this card had a very easy life. Uh, the, the PC it came in probably wasn't used for gaming a lot. Uh, which is nice for me, because that means this card is in basically pristine condition. The other 1070 was in good condition too, but that one had very clear signs of like being used. This one, I, I almost gotta say, like, this PC was probably built for gaming, but then was only used for like spreadsheets and stuff. <laughs> which honestly is how my dad uses his PC too, is a 3060 Ti in there, and he... The most demanding thing he does with it is Fusion 360, so... Uh, not like that 3060 Ti is going to have a very hard life either. But, um, yeah, I, I ended up with this card uh, for free. I didn't pay anything for this, uh, because this card was given to me by a friend of my dad, um, who was upgrading his PC, I think, to an RTX 3070, and they didn't need the card anymore and were just like, hey, you, you like messing with hardware and stuff, right? Can, could you make use of my old graphics card? And I'm just like, yeah, sure. I would have taken this if it was a GTX 480 as well, like, could have turned it into an e-power. Um, but it's a 1070. Honestly, a pretty decent card still. Um, yeah, like, I mean, Unreal Engine 5 is gonna kill this card, just like it's gonna kill my 2080 Ti. Like, a lot of graphics cards will end their life with di DirectX, not DirectX, Unreal Engine 5 games becoming popular because it just has awful performance on anything that's not a 40 series card. Uh, but apart from that, if you pay, if you play games with like sensible game engines, then this thing is actually completely fine. It can probably do 1440p if you like play on medium. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I got I got two of these now, <laughs> and they are the exact same model, exact same PCB, even down to the memory chips. They both use Micron's 8 gigabit Rev A. Um, for the memory chips, so yeah, I, I I have basically two identical cards, same PCB, same BIOS, same memory chips, but overclocking behavior is slightly different because of course the silicon lottery does apply. Uh, yeah, so I already did test this card. Like you can see, it has water block mounting on it uh, because like this heatsink is fine. Honestly, it it is a pretty decent heatsink. Uh, like, the, the other 1070 was used by a friend of mine for a long time in his daily system, and I also used that 1070 in my uh, backup system that I moved around to, like, when I visited families and I needed a PC there, I used that card. 
it's a fine heatsink. This can keep the card at like around 60 degrees on the load. The fans don't even get that loud if you put it at full speed. That was a lightning outside. I think a thunderstorm's rolling in. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like this heat the heatsink is fine, honestly. The problem is the last couple days have been extremely hot here, and this thing just wasn't wasn't cutting it. Um, my oh yeah, there's a the thunder. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, yeah, so my flat, I don't heat my flat ever. I've used the heater once and it's currently buried behind the desk that I'm filming this on. I can literally not turn it on if I wanted to because I don't need to. Because my flat is always extremely warm. Like my thermometer says it's 30 degrees in here. The windows have been closed all day, my blinds are down, <laughs> it's 30 degrees in here. Um, now I don't know if that thermometer is completely accurate, but this flat does get pretty hot, probably because my neighbors just never turn their heating off, which is fine for me, I play basically no money for heating my flat, which is nice. But it means that if you combine that plus a hot day, uh, I really need to use water cooling, which is fine because the um, water cooling setup I have on my test bench is quite honestly overkill for almost everything. I have two 360 rads, both are push-pull, and one of them is a double thickness rad. That's enough cooling for pretty much anything. Uh, so with water cooling, this was fine. This uh, was like 41 degrees max. And... I just ran the card like that. So, as to what the card does. Uh, the memory on it is slightly worse than the first 1070. The first 1070 does a plus 700, this does plus 500. Now I'm not really too concerned about that, because this is using the same Micron chips that Bullseye had on his um, 1070 Dual from all the way back. And he saw some really, really good uh, scaling with voltage on these chips. So I'm thinking cap mods plus a volt mod and these things are gonna fly. So I'm not really too concerned about slightly weaker memory clocks. What I think is actually the most important here is having a good core. Now, when it comes to the core, the first 1070 was already pretty decent. I have a pretty good track record of getting good Pascal cores. That or everyone else is just bad at overclocking them. It <laughs> could also be a thing. But um, like I know, I know there's 1070s out there that don't do two gigahertz, like the one I Bullseye had. He had a really hard time getting it to go over two gigahertz. I also know some other 1070s that just can't do two gigahertz. Um, yeah, so the first 1070, this one, it does 1280, not 1288, 2088 for the core clock just out of the box. It's just dragging the slider up, and if you force the highest power level. Uh, I mean, volt power state. Man, I can't talk today. Um, yeah, th th there's a little trick. I did a video about it once on how to force the highest power state to always be active as long as you have enough power limit. And then this card does uh, 2100, 2115, about-ish there. So pretty decent clocks, about 100 megahertz above where uh, some bad 1070s already max out. Now, what does this do? It does 2250. I know these cards exist. Well, now I have proof they exist. I've always known that there's Pascals that do over 2200. I've done 2200 on my 1060 actually, but that needed 1.45 volts. This does it at stock voltage. 2250. This has an amazing core. Now the problem is, it's really strange on how to get 2250 working because, yeah, in my pre-testing, the first round of pre-testing, it did about 2100 and then it would just always insta-crash. And then I rebooted it and then it suddenly went further, all the way to 2250. And then I crashed it again with too much memory clock and then it was back to 2100 max. No. It's a bit weird. It's potentially due to the BIOS because I saw some weird throttling going on. Uh, it was already power throttling at 200 watts despite the limit being 250. So I'm thinking like 
maybe the uh, power inputs are not that great laid out. Like, realistically, you would want to have most of your VRM connected to the 8-pin, because that's rated for 150 watts, whereas the 6-pin and the PCIe are rated for 75 watts each. So, what could happen is, if you have... Let's say, if you do something dumb, which I don't think this card does, but le for the sake of argument, let's say you do something dumb and you connect your V-Core to the 6-pin and your memory to the 8-pin. Now, your memory is never going to draw 150 watts, but your V-Core VRM is going to very quickly hit 75 watts. But the throttling happens as soon as one of the three inputs hits its maximum. So, if you just hit max on the 6-pin and the other two inputs are still fine, well, you're still going to power throttle, even though you still have headroom. Um, so I think maybe one too many V-Core phases is on the 6-pin on this PCB. I don't really recall seeing this throttling with my other card. So maybe this just has a weird BIOS version that acts a bit differently. I could check that out. By the way, raining has started. Yeah, we are getting a thunderstorm. Sorry if you can hear that. Also the light, like, the light just disappeared <laughs> because there's just a grey mist in front of my window now. Anyway, it's a rant video. I don't care. Um... Anyway, so, what was I saying? Yeah, so the core clock being kind of weird could potentially be due to like the weird throttling that was going on, uh, or potentially BIOS things. Like, I, I am convinced that 2250 was real because the performance was about where it should be and it did end up crashing at 2260. Um, and, like, it was scoring better than 2100, so it wasn't just, like, misreading the clock, it was genuinely going faster. So, it can do 2250, but I'm not entirely sure how to consistently make it do 2250 yet. The easy solution could potentially be just finding a better BIOS, or just chunt modding it. Um... And maybe there needs to be some driver hackery. I don't quite remember what driver I used for the other 1070. It was quite a while ago, so it sure as hell wasn't the newest one. Um, so maybe there's like something going on with the driver that it acts weird. Uh, maybe there was something going on because I tested it on Windows 7 and not on Windows 10, which, as far as I know, 10 series you should run on Windows 10, and then 900 series and older you should run on Windows 7, as far as I know, for like the best scores. Uh, so me running this on Windows 7 might have messed with something. I'm not entirely sure. The thing that I do now is that it does 2250 when it wants to. And now I just need to figure out how to make it want to run 2250. Because that is an amazing call. This thing on the face change? That's like... Actually, where does Pascal max out called? Like 2500, 2600? I'm not entirely sure, but... I think that this core is capable of great things uh, when you have it in the right setup. And I think the memory issues, they, they can be taken care of. Uh, because again, because Boltzoid saw great scaling on these uh, on, on the Micron chips uh, with just voltage and also cap mods. So yeah, and I mean, I saw similar things on um, the Hynix chips on my 1060, they, I think they started doing 700 offset, and then with capacitors, they just did plus a thousand, which is just the maximum uh, that you can set, so, yeah, I, I, I'm expecting similar things about these uh, Micron chips, so, this 1070 is great, it's absolutely great, and, and the neat part is, because I have two of them, uh, I, I could test something on one card, and then, you know, if, if I'm not entirely sure if a mod might, like, damage the card, I can test it on the worst card first, which I guess is the older card now, uh, and then, I, I don't really think I could do any mods like that to that, but it, it gives me the option. Also, again, I could run them in SLI, um, which I will do, I just, I just have the Unify set up right now, and that's my one board that doesn't do an SLI. <laughs> Um, but I will do SLI at some point, because these are low-power draw enough for my 750-watt PSU. I just uh, need to find out how to... Like, I have enough water blocks for both of them. Uh, I just need to figure out how to make the tube situation connect to everything. Because, uh, like, my water block is, like, on, on quick disconnects, like these. So that I can remove the block plus card from the test bench. 
stuck with having to unscrew the block first, because that's annoying. Uh, so, I have to see how to hook that up, because the other ones have... I, I have two more quick disconnects, but they're different, they're not compatible with the ones I have on the, on this test bench, so... Anyway, um, I can make it work somehow. And... Yeah, I, uh... I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> the storm is really uh, picking up. Uh, I was not expecting a thunderstorm like that today. They said slight chance of rain, and I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm right now. <laughs> I, I, I guess Mother Nature wants me to stop the video. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I missed. Um, I guess not really. Like, it's a nice PCB. Nice enough PCB, it could be better, like it's using discrete MOSFETs, it has one high side, two low sides. If you want specifics, just look up the PCB video I did on the other card, it's the same one. Uh, capacitors, you know, it has a bunch of motorized ceramic, that's nice, good number of CAN types as well. It, it, there could be some SMD polymers, but I could just add more caps myself. Like, honest, honestly, the backplate is probably not staying, <laughs> because... Uh, my typical way, like, I could get motorized ceramics and mod the card that way, but my typical way of cap wanting things is just throw can types at things, uh, which obviously don't fit below the backplate here. So I think the backplate is not staying on the card, despite how much... Like, I actually like this backplate. You know, it's not su super over the top. Also, I find this funny. Also, that's not for show, that this backplate legitimately gets very hot. There's a thermal pad where the VRM is. Um... If you run the card for a while, especially in an ambient temperature like I am, uh, this this does, does get to like 40, maybe 50 degrees. Uh, yeah, what else is it? Like, decent PCB, moddable enough RAM, and an absolutely amazing core on this. So, I guess I have yet another project to add to the list. I know I know 6850, I'll bench it. It will happen, I, I just didn't really have the time and enough motivation right now to do it. I know I promised it like two days later and now ten days have passed. Uh, it, it will happen. It will happen at some point. I'll, I'll go bench it, I will still e-power it. Uh, just not happening right now. Uh, and yeah, this thing's getting thrown in onto the list next to the 1060, the 1080, the 960, the e-powered 980. <laughs> <laughs> the 780 can't be bothered edition, that's also still a thing. <laughs> I have too many projects, um, so it legitimately might be a while before I do anything with this, but it's uh, it's a free 1070, and a really good free 1070, and I just wanted to make a video about it. J just a good old rambling video. I Like, again, I don't really know what the point of this video is, I just wanted to make one, so here it is. And that's gonna be it, so... Thank you all for watching, if you endured me for 18 minutes and 20 seconds, and until next time, goodbye.